Hello and welcome and this is video two in a series of four uh, for people who are wheelchair users or perhaps are spending prolonged periods of time seated in chairs and these are adapted and modified movements of Tai Chi and Qigong sequences that we use in our Tai Chi and Qigong classes. My name is Philip Sheridan, I'm the founder of Discover Tai Chi. In this video, we're going to be exploring some movements from the eight strands of brocade Qigong set, also known as the Badwa Jin. It dates, we have the first written recorded dating of this set in 1153. Um, it would probably be practiced before it was written down, so it's probably a bit older, but uh, so it gives us at least a thousand years of practice. The good thing about this set is that it's maintained a continuity of practice through all those years and actually has become perhaps one of the most popular Qigong sets around the world. And for that reason, it means it's also one of the most, most well researched. So that gives us a good kind of basis from which to introduce some of the movements. We're going to focus on five key movements from the set that are most appropriate and most applicable for people who are in wheelchairs or, as I say, seated for very prolonged periods of time. If you can stand up and do stand up, then please do so if you wish. But as I say, we're looking at these movements very much from a perspective of a wheelchair user. So, five movements. Some movements will involve hands and arms going above head. If you remember from our first video, if that's a difficult movement for you, then we can adapt those movements and I'll show you how we do so. So let's start off with the very first movement that we're going to explore. It's called Two Hands Hold the Sky. Let's start off from our start position, hands on the thighs. We're going to pick the hands up and have the palms facing in. The fingers point towards one another. It's as if the hands are embracing a large ball. And we bring the hands up and around the ball and then at shoulder height we turn the palms forward. So if you find that it's difficult to lift your hands and arms above head height, this is where we can just push the hands forward swim them outwards, a bit like doing breaststroke. And just bring the hands around. If you have armrests on your seat or chair, you'll have to negotiate those. And bring yourself back to that start position with the palms in, embracing our large ball. And we can then go again, turning over, pressing, swimming the hands around coming back to the start position. So that's a nice movement for everyone. If you have the ability to lift hands and arms overhead, then we can come round, turn the palms over, and then continue to press upwards. Now you can see why it's called two hands hold the sky. There's the palms holding the sky, and then we let the hands fall out and down until we swim the, swim the hands around to where we started. It's a lovely opening movement. It's like waking up on the morning and stretching the hands and arms. You could almost have a yawn as well. Notice that we're just breathing comfortably. So if you're swimming the hands forwards and around, continue to do so. Or if you wish, you can go forward, press overhead. Notice that we're not overextending the arms. We're just working within a range that is comfortable for us. Let's do that one more time, at whichever position you find comfortable.
and we'll come back down and we'll bring the hands to rest on the back tops of the knees or the backs of the thighs. So there's our first movement. We get asked how many repetitions or how many times should I practice these movements? There isn't any strict prescription. We tend to suggest between four and eight repetitions or four to eight times. But that depends, depends on you and how you're feeling at the time. Um, if you wish to do more, please do so. Um, and if you wish to just do it two or three times, you can do so as well. At the end of me showing you these five movements, we'll put them together and kind of put them together a little bit like a flow that will only take a few minutes, but it's a really nice way of linking these movements together. So it can make a really good movement snack or a nice way of building movement into your day-to-day -day routines. So let's move on to our next movement called Archer. So we're going to be releasing an arrow, a bow and arrow, I should say, to our right and to our left. So let's do that. Start with the hands on the knees or backs of the thighs. I'm going to pick the hands up and cross them in front of my chest. I have my right hand on the outside. That's going to hold the bowstring. The left hand here is going to be pushing into the back of a bow. If any of you have done archery, you'll kind of get the idea. So we're going to go to our left first, or your left. So I'm going to draw the bow. I'm looking to an imaginary target on the left side, and I pull back, push with this left hand into the imaginary bow, and draw the bowstring, look into the distance, release the arrow by opening the fingers, and then this is where we extend the right hand. So we end up with this balanced position, and then we bring the hands down before picking them up and crossing them once more in front of the chest. But this time my left hand is on the outside, that tells me I'm going to take the imaginary bowstring, draw the bow, and this time I'm looking to my right. I look into the distance, let the arrow go, extend the left arm out, and then let the arms relax. So you can feel that this is a really good shoulder exercise. Bring the hands around, cross, right hand this time, takes the bowstring, looking to the left. Those of you who have maybe done archery will know that we use the muscles of the chest and shoulders to really support our draw, as it's called. We release the arrow, away it flies, watch it fly as well, as we extend the arm, and only when that arm is extended do we turn the head back to the center. Cross the hands over, draw the bow, this time left hand, look into the distance, release the arrow, and away it goes. Get the idea. An alternation from one side to the other, drawing an imaginary bow and arrow. It can lend itself quite nicely to the breath, uh, as we talked about uh, in our first video. So let's explore what that might look like. And we're going to use the breath as the trigger, so to speak, to release our arrow. So let's do that together. Let's have a right hand on the outside, draw our bow. And as we do so, we take a big breath in, Fill the lungs, and the very moment we want to breathe out is the moment that we release the arrow. There's the arm extending. And we can just breathe naturally as we let the hands settle. And then we bring the hands across in front of the torso, left hand again. We can begin to breathe deeply, fill the lungs. And the moment we want to breathe out, we release the arrow smoothly. And away it flies. And we're just breathing naturally. 
Let's go one more time to each side. So we can take a breath in. And the breath gives us this smooth release. Breathing out and immediately release the arrow. So you notice that we don't hold on to our aim, so to speak. Let's go again to the right side. So left hand draws the bowstring, right hand, breath in. And as soon as you breathe out, there's the cue to let the arrow fly. So you have this very smooth movement that coordinates very nicely with the breath. So I hope that is an enjoyable movement for you to explore. As you can imagine, it's a real chest opener, great one for the shoulders, really evocative movement as well. So I hope you enjoy that. Here's our next movement. Do you remember hold the ball, one of our fundamental kind of positions that we explored in movement one? So this is where we're going to use that hand position. I've got my left hand on top, right hand underneath, holding a ball. And I'm going to bring my right hand forwards and around that ball, turn it over. Press down now with my left hand and press up so that we create this S shape. One hand pressing up, one hand pressing down. It's called part the earth from the sky. And then we turn the palms and bring them back together until we're holding our beach ball once more. Only now we've swapped hands, if you've noticed. Right hand on top this time. Bottom hand, left hand comes forward and up as if tracing the surface of that ball, turns over and then presses up and presses down. And here's that S shape again. Just like two hands hold the sky, if it's a challenge to bring that top hand overhead, then we can bring the bottom hand over the top, but push forwards and around. Just circle the hands back to hold the ball. Here's the left hand coming up. Instead of going overhead, I can push forwards, turn my palms and just smoothly bring them back to hold the ball. Get the idea? Bottom hand, right hand this time, over the top. It's like swimming. Again, that top hand around and then bringing it underneath. Get the idea? Or if you do feel comfortable with the top hand pressing up and then press up and press down and really feel as though that you create some space for yourself. You push the earth away, you push the sky away and then bring the hands back together. Bottom hand coming up, over the top, pressing up, pressing down. So that's part of the earth from the sky with that adaptation for swimming the hand around and coming back on top before alternating swimming the hands around like so. Okay, so we've done quite a bit of pressing and pulling. We could do with a little bit of rotation, couldn't we? And that's our next movement. It's called Wise Owl, gazes backwards. Very simple. We're simply going to be looking over our right shoulder and then our left shoulder. We're going to start with our hands and arms hanging loosely. Again, if you have arm rests uh, or seat rests on either side, you're going to have to let your hands and arms hang on the outside. And imagine that we have two people, one on the right, slightly behind us, one on the left and imagine that they call your name. So what would you do? You would turn to the right, look, but we're going to lift the hands and arms as well, just to shoulder height. And then we're going to immediately turn back to the center, let the hands relax. And then imagine another person on your left calls your name. So you turn 
to see who it is, but at the same time, you lift the hands and arms up to shoulder height, the palm is uppermost, and then turn back to where we came. Very simple movement. The hands and arms seem to lend themselves to helping you maybe just get a little bit more range in the turn. If you find it restrictive within your particular seat, just work comfortably. Again, try not to force things. Let's go to the right again. So I'm just turning. I'm not stretching to turn. I'm just moving within a comfortable range of motion and immediately coming back out of that rotation. So again, a nice one for the spine around the head and neck and shoulders as well. Turning to the left. Wonderful. It lends itself, again, quite nicely to coordinating with our breath. You can probably guess that as we turn and lift the hands, we can have a breath in. Fill the lungs and then just breathing comfortably outwards as we let the hands fall and we turn back. Breathing in, if you wish, turning to the left and immediately as we breathe out, we turn back. So again, you notice that the movement fits the breath, not the breath to the movement. Breathing in, turning to the right, breathing out, and then just breathing naturally as we come back, and then breathing in, breathing out, turning, and just breathing naturally as we come back. And again, you can do that as many times as you like. So again, a really nice movement for again, if we're seated for long periods of time or we're in a wheelchair and we need to build some movement into the shoulder girdle. Okay, here's our final movement and it's called pull the rope. We call it pull the rope. Uh, sometimes it's also called stare fiercely. Uh, but we think pull the rope lends itself very nicely to, to what we think this movement is about. So I want you to imagine, and again, this is where we're going to use some imagery, that you are sat beside a very still and calm body of water, like a lake, or maybe beside the sea when it's very calm. And out in the distance, not too far, is a small boat. And connected to that boat coming all the way towards you on the side of the shore is a long rope. And we're gonna draw our boat in towards us. So we're going to start with our hands in very loose fists tucked in. And we can start, should we start with the right hand? We're gonna reach out. We're going to open the hand, wrap it around the rope, pull that rope and draw our boat towards us. And as we do so, we reach out with the left hand, open the hand, wrap it around the rope as if wrapping it around the wrist and draw that boat closer. And as you can see, as we draw one hand out, we pull the other hand out to reach the rope. So it's as if we're keeping a smooth, even tension on that rope as we alternate. And if we really imagine the sights and the sounds and the sensations that we would experience and an encounter at our particular location, be it a lake or beside the sea, picture the boat. What is your boat made from? Is it wood? fiberglass. We don't want it too big or heavy. And what about the rope? It's going to be wet, isn't it, from being in the sea or in the water? Is it a nylon rope, thin and coloured? Or is it maybe a thicker type coarse hemp rope? The more that you can picture the details, the more that actually you're engaging your brain and your body in the movement. 
Okay, let's imagine that our boat is close and this is our penultimate pull. Don't worry if we're out of sync. As I reach out, this is my left hand. This is the last pull. So I keep my other hand, the right hand in this time and imagine that I just draw the boat in gently like so. And just relax. So again, a nice movement for the shoulders, more rotation in that movement as well. And it's a very evocative way, it almost becomes a moving meditation if you can really picture the scene in which you are located when you're pulling in that boat. So those are the five kind of choice movements that we've plucked from the eight strands of brocade that are very appropriate for people who are wheelchair users or spend a long time in seats. I said I would put them together as a flow where we're basically now going to transition from one movement to the next so that we have this nice kind of flow of movement. We'll probably only do each movement maybe two uh, times just to create this sense of continuity but it makes for a very nice kind of movement break or movement snack. Feel free to follow along or if you want to observe first of all and just get a sense of how it all fits together then please do so but if you're ready to join in we'll start from our start position. Remember those adaptations or modifications to some of the movements uh, where the hands go overhead. So again, work comfortably uh, with your range of motion. But we're starting off with two hands hold the sky. And we're just going to do this twice. So here we go. And we're just going to be breathing comfortably throughout the whole of this flow. As I press, open up, so I'm just moving smoothly, slowly. Here's the second. Push. But we're going to cross the hands smoothly. I've got the right hand on the outside, so I'm drawing my bow We're into archer to the left. Smoothly release the arrow. Going to cross the left hand on the outside, draw the bow, looking to the right. Let the hands fall. And then pick the left hand up, hold the ball, left hand on the top, and we're into part the earth from the sky. Right hand comes over the top, presses up or forwards if you're adapting it, and then bring the hands back. Right hand on top this time, bottom hand comes up, presses up, presses down. Lovely. Turn to the right, wise out, pick the hands up, looking over the right shoulder, turning back, looking to the left, wise out. turning back. Then hands into the side, right hand reaches out and we're into pull the rope. And we'll just do two pulls per arm. So four pulls in total. Here's the second pull with the left arm. Third pull, right arm. And our final pull with the left arm. And then down. That's it. Simple as that. Maybe two minutes at most. You could add a few more repetitions of those movements if you wish, but the idea is that you create a short flow of movement comprised of each particular exercise. So feel free to explore those uh, as you wish, but I hope that's a really nice way 
of kind of combining those movements together to give you something meaningful to practice and enjoy. I said we would pick up on the breath awareness exercise that we practiced in the very first video and we're going to bring some mental imagery into that. So if you remember we started with the right hand over the heart and the left hand is in that familiar permission position excuse me on the lower abdomen just below the navel and it's worth just taking a few breaths just to get tuned in if you remember we simply follow the breath we're not controlling the breath close your eyes if you wish but here's the imagery for this first hand position I'd like you to imagine that you are in a green woodland or forest so just first of all get that idea in mind. Green, lush, woodland or forest. And with all of this imagery, if you have actually somewhere in mind where you've actually experienced this, then bring that to mind. It's so much the better. We want to be comfortable, don't we? So we don't want it too cold or too hot. So again, see if you can have this sense of comfort and ease and also picture all the sights, sounds and sensations that you would experience in that green lush woodland setting. Sunlight through the leaves. Is there a breeze or is it perfectly still? There'll be birdsong and the hum of insects no doubt. There's probably fragrance in the air as well. Again, the more that you can picture these sensations, the better it becomes. And all the while you're just tuned into your heartbeat and your natural breath cycle while imagining yourself in that location or place. And when you're ready, you're going to take the top hand down, if you remember, as we did in the first exercise, and it finds the solar plexus, the soft squidgy bit right below the rib cage, and it's above the left hand. So again, just get comfortable in that hand position, first of all. And there's a little clue to our imagery for this hand position, the solar plexus, solar as in sun, plexus as in center. So we're going to picture a warm, sunny day, perfect blue skies. So again, picture yourself in a situation, a location or a place where you've been able to relax in the perfect warm sunshine of a perfect blue sky day and just kind of have that sense of the warmth and light of the sun hitting your body and just kind of breathe that whole sensibility in and enjoy the sensation all the while just letting your breath do its own thing as we follow so warm, bright sunshine is the image. And when we're ready to move on, we're going to bring our bottom hand onto, sorry, the top hand onto the bottom hand, so right on top of the left. And we're ready for our final piece of imagery. And it returns us to our watery landscape uh, that we explored previously with our exercises. Only now we're just going to sit quietly beside a still body of water. So again, find something meaningful for you. That could be a mountain lake perhaps, could be a large pond, could be beside the sea, again maybe early morning or dusk when it can become incredibly calm. 
and just picture the scene. And again, all the sights and the sounds and the sensations that you may experience in that position or location. And if you have somewhere in mind, then so much the better. But just breathe it in. And just enjoy that sensation of calmness or serenity that's embodied by the still waters before you. If it's a mountain lake, you might have the perfect reflections of the landscape around you. And when you're ready, you can pick your hands up, place them on the knees, and that kind of indicates that we've finished. So again, you can spend as long as you like in those different locations, green, lush woodland, bright sunshine, still waters, shall we say, beside the sea or a lake, and just breathe in the sight, sounds and sensations of each location. Again, that just enriches our first breath awareness exercise. We don't want to make it an onerous challenge. There's no time prescription to this. As you can see, we went through that relatively quickly, but that's all that's needed sometimes is a quick kind of opportunity to give ourselves some headspace. If you have a bit more time, then yeah, feel free to linger in those locations. But be mindful not to force things and don't turn it into some kind of endurance exercise. That would be kind of detracting from what we're aiming for, which is to create this sense of relaxation and sense of peace and calm. And we're not seeking anything out of it. We're just allowing things to settle down. So that brings this second video in this series of four to an end. I hope that's been enjoyable. I hope you've enjoyed exploring those five movements from the eight strands of Brocade Qigong set. And in our next video, we're going to be looking at an even older set of Qigong movements called the Five Animals Play set. So until then, take care. Enjoy your practice and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.